Hello everyone and welcome to this brief informative session on the radiotherapy and oncology programme offered here at Ulster University. My name is Andrea Mullen and I am the course director for the BSc Honours Radiotherapy and Oncology undergraduate programme. Before we delve into more detail about the programme, it's probably an idea to define what is radiotherapy and oncology. Oncology is the study of cancer and radiotherapy is the treatment of cancer using ionizing radiation to eradicate or manage tumour progression. For students who are interested in a career in radiotherapy and oncology, a wide skill set is needed. You need to have a good knowledge in science as you will be working with ionizing radiation and the job entails using sophisticated equipment to accurately deliver radiation treatment to patients. Another skill that therapeutic radiographers require is to be able to work well as a team. And in some professions, working alone is the norm. However, in radiotherapy and oncology, therapeutic radiographers work in pairs or in teams of up to four persons per team. So what are we going to cover today? Well, we're going to look at why study radiotherapy and oncology at Ulster. We will also look at what you will learn on the programme. So the various different aspects from patient care through to oncology to radiation physics. And we look at how you will be taught. So that's using uh, various teaching methods to ensure that there is a variety to suit everyone. And again, how we will support you with your studies and with the transition into third level education. And finally, upon successful completion of the programme, we will look at the job opportunities available for therapeutic radiographers. So why study radiotherapy and oncology at Ulster? Well, our programme here at Ulster is highly valued and our graduates are very sought after both locally and internationally. And one of our many advantages of studying radiotherapy and oncology at Ulster is that the cohort sizes are small. So each year we enrol between 14 to 16 students. We are limited to these numbers due to our practice placement places. So from the onset, we get to know our students extremely well and have great communication as, with them. We do also get to build up a rapport with our students and the fact that we have these uh, small cohort sizes, this also allows for personalised teaching support. And this is reflected in the 2022 uh, National Student Survey, where 92% of our students expressed satisfaction with the programme. We also have four dedicated staff uh, who teach um, who deliver the teaching on the programme, who are all very approachable. And we also offer an open door policy. So there's no real need to book an appointment to see us. We are always available uh, most of the time uh, to assist and support you on your journey. Again, we also realise that most of our students join the programme having followed the traditional educational pathway from secondary school or college. And the transition from secondary into third level education can be quite daunting for some students. And so from the onset, our students are assigned a studies advisor who can assist with any concerns or issues that uh, they may have. For example, uh, module content, uh, they're open to discussion, having discussions around um, time management skills and they can offer simple advice and support on how to progress successfully into the next semester and into subsequent years. We have assigned a personal research project supervisor to each student in their final year of study. You will work closely along with them to produce a research proposal. We have first class facilities at our McGee campus. We were the first to install the virtual environment for radiotherapy training, also known as the VERT. This virtual environment allows students to practice their skills in a very safe and non-pressurised environment. 
as we know, we can all appreciate that our hospitals are very busy. It's a fast, that fast paced working environment. And so having the Vert Suite allows our students that time to practice their skills in setting up virtual patients in preparation for their practice placements. Again, it also helps with skill development and refreshing of skills as you progress through the programme. We have recently purchased a new state of the art treatment planning system. So students can practice designing individual radiotherapy treatment plans for patients undergoing radiotherapy treatment. And finally, the professional practice placements are fully integrated within the programme. The placements take place at both cancer centres in Northern Ireland, the, uh, not the NWCC, which is the Northwest Cancer Centre located at Altnagalvan Hospital, Derry, Londonderry, and the NICC, the Northern Ireland Cancer Centre, located at Belfast City Hospital. Students will undertake a placement block in each year of the course. We have excellent support from our placement providers. We have a dedicated clinical tutor and practice educator on site and are available for support and guidance during placement rotations. There is also an education group composed of academic staff from Ulster University and the clinical staff from the cancer sites who meet on a regular basis to discuss student progress and any issues which may arise. So what will you learn? Well, basically you will learn the skills and competencies that you need to become a therapeutic radiographer. The programme delivers a combination of modules, both academic and practical sessions. So the academic modules include human anatomy and physiology. As you will be working with patients, it is imperative that you understand the workings of the human body. So we look at the body systems in physiology sessions and how the body operates in a state of disease in the pathology sessions. Other areas such as physics and radiation science, uh, here we're sort of looking at the production of x-rays and in radiobiology, uh, we're looking at how radiation interacts with the body tissues. Another important area is radiation protection. Um, an understanding of how to protect our patients from unnecessary ionizing radiation and in particular ourselves as well is extremely important. Again, oncology and patient care uh, is embedded in all years of the programme. Patient care is another skill that therapeutic radiographers acquire and it really is at the forefront of everything we do on a daily basis. And finally, we have clinical studies and professional practice placements. So we have over 38 weeks of practice placement embedded within the programme. Here you will get the opportunity to work alongside qualified therapeutic radiographers, gaining valuable hands-on clinical experience. The professional practice placement schedules give, uh, gives an overview of each year of the programme. And I wanted to draw your attention mainly to the placement blocks highlighted on the schedule there in blue. And you will see that two of the clinical rotations take place during the summer months. So this is probably something that you should consider uh, if you are applying for an allied health professional course. These placements are mandatory and you must complete each one in order to successfully progress to graduation. So semester one, this really, this schedule sort of gives you a typical overview um, of the three year radiotherapy and oncology program. So it really begins in semester one uh, in September, normally uh, sort of around the end of September, where you have 12 teaching weeks. And this allows you time to settle into university life and to get a feel for the sort of topics and subjects that you will be covering. This then is followed by a revision week and then you have the Christmas uh, break. Following this, you come back in January and undertake orientation placement at both the cancer centres. This is a great opportunity to really get a feel for the job itself and the role of the therapeutic radiographer. And this placement mainly involves observational work, but also offers you the opportunity to experience the hospital environment. It also gives you that opportunity to begin to develop and improve 
upon communication skills with both patients and staff. Then we move into semester two, which involves 12 teaching weeks, followed by one revision week and a three week examination period. And it is during this period that you would undertake a sort of module assessment or examinations. Following the exam period, then we move into the summer months. And as you can see there on the schedule, the placement one is actually divided into two parts. So placement one, the students are divided into two groups. So group A will commence placement in May through until July. And then they will take their summer break following this placement. The students who are assigned to group B will begin their summer on vacation, and then they will begin their placement in July through to September. All students then will return to campus uh, in late September to begin year two, semester one. Um, you will notice that there are only eight teaching weeks in semester one, year two, and the remainder of the placement one is completed at this point during the months of November and December. Semester two then follows a similar pattern uh, to semester two, year one, where you have 12 weeks of teaching, one revision week, and then you have the examination period. You then move into the summer to undertake your practice placement two. This again follows uh, a similar pattern as year one placement where students are divided into the two groups. And it, it's worth noting at this point that year one and the year two students are undertaking placement at the same time. So this is a great support, uh, particularly if you are a year one student, because you are getting to work alongside more experienced year two students. And equally, year two students are enjoying that responsibility of taking on the role of mentoring our new year one students. Student feedback has been very positive in terms of this arrangement, and both cohorts enjoy being a support for each other. And then finally, in year three in semester one, you will undertake 12 teaching weeks. And then semester two is dedicated purely to placement experiences. So during this 18 week period from January through to May, you will complete your final practice placement. And it is during this time that you also have the opportunity to visit other institutions across Europe. Or however, you may wish to remain in the UK, but it does offer you that opportunity to visit other cancer centres to experience their treatment techniques and setups. So how will I be taught? Well, we teach in a variety of ways. Um, the majority of our teaching is through lecture, so that's face-to-face -face teaching. And in some cases, students will be asked to participate in seminars. So students may be given um, some directed reading to go and research a, a particular subject area. They may be asked then to present it as a case study or to present it in a a PowerPoint presentation, and then they will research this either individually or as a group. They will then return uh, onto campus and then they will present this to the whole cohort. These seminars are a great way to encourage discussion and debate, as well as encouraging independent learning. We also have practice sessions uh, throughout the programme using our VERT system and also our treatment planning system. And this obviously prepares you for your practice placements. Other ways that we uh, teach are through case studies, where you may be asked to um, choose a particular interest, uh, interesting patient during your placement. Uh, and you will be asked to follow their cancer journey from their diagnosis uh, through to their treatment. And then obviously you will, you will design this case study and then return onto campus after your placement and present the findings uh, to the rest of your cohort. Again, we have our professional practice, uh, as we, we've seen on the schedule, it's basically the majority of it is held in, in the summer months and then in the long period uh, in semester two in year three. So again, you're getting to uh, develop your skills on a continue, your practical skills on, on a, a continuous basis. 
And again, we have some online learning as well, uh, particularly during COVID, we uh, benefited very much from online learning. However, most of our, our teaching now has returned to campus where we do have the face-to-face -face, um, learning. But the majority of our teaching resources are available online via um, our teaching platform known as Blackboard Learn. And this can be accessed by students who are enrolled on those modules 24-7. So again, all the assessment for what you've been taught will be examined through uh, examinations. Uh, it can be in the pieces of coursework, for example, written assignments, or you may be asked to design a poster, uh, and obviously your clinical performance during your placements. So I suppose at this point, it's important to acknowledge the fact that this is a three-year full-time course so you could be expected to be on campus five days a week, Monday to Friday. And each year um, of the course, the hours in class actually uh, vary. So in year one, you may be expected to be on campus 20 hours a week. In year two, 16 hours. And in year three, 12 hours. And you can see as we move towards completion of the program, the number of contact hours decreases. Now, this doesn't indicate that workload is getting lighter or there is less to do. What it does mean is that we are moving towards a more student centred approach to learning, allowing you to take on more autonomy and more independent learning. Again, the hours during clinical placement uh, can be anything from 8.30 in the morning to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. Now, again, this obviously can vary slightly depending on which hospital you are assigned to. So how do we support you? Well, as we've already mentioned, we have a number of support mechanisms in place. So we have the studies advisor to help with the transition into third level education. We have peer mentoring uh, established during the summer practice placement uh, in year one and year two, as we previously mentioned. We recently introduced a buddy system for practice placements. And this is uh, here students are assigned a buddy who is a qualified therapeutic radiographer who will work alongside the student. Uh, and they're really there to sort of uh, support and seek advice from uh, throughout your placement rotation. Uh, as we mentioned before, we have the Blackboard Learn uh, sort of resource platform. This is where all our teaching resources for our programme are available to access. And we appreciate that nowadays the majority of students have part time jobs or in some cases, some students may have family commitments. So having this resource available 24 seven uh, allows for a more flexible approach to learning. We have great library facilities and resources available and all the recommended texts uh, and reading for the program or for the modules are available to borrow from the library. Our Student Wellbeing Centre is also available uh, for students to avail of should they require help with studies, uh, study advice, uh, any financial issues and any health issues. And finally, on successful completion of the programme, you will graduate as a therapeutic radiographer. And many of our graduates go on to work as therapeutic radiographers in the NHS setting. However, there are some who choose uh, private clinics, particularly uh, in the Republic of Ireland. So on completion of the course, you are eligible to apply for registration uh, with the statutory regulatory board, the Health and Care Professions Council, also known as the HCPC. And you cannot practice as a therapeutic radiographer without being registered uh, with the HCPC. You also have the opportunity to become a member of the Society and the College of Radiographers. And as a graduate, your starting salary is around 25,000, which is actually quite modest considering you are a new graduate. However, you can actually move up the incremental scale relatively quickly. So at the moment, um, there is a shortage of radiographers in both the UK and in Ireland. So if you are interested uh, in 
in radiotherapy and oncology, then there is a very high likelihood that you will be employed relatively soon uh, post-graduation. And some of our statistics have shown that 95% of our students in, are in employment or further study within 15 months of graduating. So that's obviously a very positive um, note to take on board. So the Radiotherapy and Oncology programme is located on the McGee campus in Derry, Londonderry. And Derry, Londonderry is regarded as Northern Ireland's second city. And the campus is ideally situated for exploring the northwest of the country. There are some beautiful landscapes to see, um, and coastal uh, towns to explore, and some beautiful beaches. The city also has lots of coffee shops, bars, restaurants, nightclubs, as well as craft shops, theatres, and at certain times of the year, the city hosts cultural festivals. Another positive point uh, of being located in Derry, London, Derry, is according to Numbio in 2021, that it is one of the most affordable places to live in the UK. And this is quite appealing, particularly if you are a student and paying for your own uh, accommodation. Or indeed, if good news for family members, um, if perhaps they are paying or helping you with the accommodation costs. Again, it's also worth noting at this point, if you are considering a career in radiotherapy and oncology and you're thinking to join the, the programme here at Ulster, it's very important to realise that the courses are continually reviewed um, and this is just to really take advantage of any of our new teaching approaches and any developments uh, within the industry. So the schedule that was posted previously is what is currently um, being followed. But however, this may change for your uh, year of entry. So that's just something uh, to bear in mind. And again, if you are considering uh, radiotherapy and oncology, um, you can access uh, the code for the programme at Ulster is the UCAS code is B822, which you can see there in the top right hand corner uh, of the of the image. So our entry requirements um, are obviously published uh, on the website. However, um, we do require for GCSE level, we do require GCSE physics or double award science. And at A level, we require three Bs at A level and one of those must be a science. But for information on equivalencies and questions around specific circumstances, you are free to email the admissions team at admissions at ulster.ac.uk. If you need any more information, again, you can access the Ulster University website, ulster.ac.uk, study at ulster.ac.uk. So are you ready to apply? Well, if you are, you can contact ucast.com and submit. And we hopefully will see you at some point uh, at Ulster University.